software. Uh, as you might know, Tetris software is a leading company in the uh, software industry. We mainly engage in building and managing dedicated teams of software engineers, QA engineers, and uh, UX engineers. We work with clients from Europe, mainly Scandinavia, the USA, Australia, and Sri Lanka. We are always looking to hire great talent. If you visit our website, uh, p2software.com, under the careers tab, uh, you will see our open vacancies. That's about creative software, about today's giveaway talk. Uh, uh, today's uh, giveaway talk, uh, talk going to uh, present by Oshadi. He has uh, more than 13 years of experience in quality assurance field and uh, and uh, she has joined Creative Software in year 2018. So during this presentation, uh, you may need some clarification. Please feel free to ask questions while during the presentation and demo. And also you can use the chat window to ask your questions and uh, there is a Q&A session after the demo as well. So, Oshadi, you can take one. Yeah, thank you, Lakma. Um, so, um, as uh, Lakma mentioned, uh, today I'm going to focus on um, uh, discussing on UI path, uh, which is a uh, RPA tool, and uh, I'm going to focus on uh, uh, discussing on this uh, tool in the uh, test automation aspect. Uh, so, today's agenda would be, uh, since this tool is a RPA tool, I will first uh, talk about the robotic process automation first, and a little bit about UI path and then uh, how to do uh, automation in a uh, web application and how we can extend it, API automation, mobile application automation, desktop automation, and uh, then uh, how to create a process using uh, all these uh, automated uh, activities, and then um, execution using orchestrator and report generation part. So what exactly RPA is? Uh, as, as it says, it is mimicking the human actions through a sequence of steps uh, without human intervention, uh, which will uh, lead to meaningful ends. And, um, RPA is quite capable of doing manual work like opening emails, logging into uh, and navigate uh, applications, and to more judgmental uh, activities like uh, scraping data from the web uh, or any other application, uh, and uh, artificial intelligence based decisions, uh, making calculations. Uh, so the uh, industry is moving towards uh, automating the business processes. These are the advantages they see, that is, when they automate the business process, uh, it is 24-7 uh, operations, no, non-stop performance. It is uh, reducing the cost of uh, human employees, improves efficiency, increases the quality, um, and uh, we can have internal control and uh, traceability also. But, however, it comes with certain disadvantages as well. Uh, if you're, if uh, the business has a bad process, it's not practical to automate, and there are some tasks that you cannot automate as well. Uh, if you change the process, you will need to update the RPA code, uh, and um, there will be a huge resistance from the employees, um, uh, and also it needs maintenance. Yeah, so now we'll talk about a use case of uh, process automation. Uh, this information I got from UiPath official website. Uh, so in a hospital, uh, say that uh, there is a, there are several uh, applications to uh, uh, use uh, for emails and for uh, letter creations and enter data, or maybe there is no uh, application at all. It's all manual. So in that case, uh, a nurse or a doctor will have to go through this entire set of process uh, steps that we see in the left side, like we see uh, lab results, open patient records, uh, enter lab data, uh, etc., to uh, come to the uh, last step that is verify uh, sending the verification. But when we automate it using a robot, uh, we can use certain um, uh, we can automate certain actions like 
pulling lab data reports and uh, patient reports and uh, alert physicians. And then uh, while uh, uh, nurses and doctors can intervene in more manual stuff like uh, decision making, reviewing, confirmation, like that. Um, another uh, practical use case is uh, in the retail management, starting from business uh, and sales analytics, uh, uh, store planning, demand and supply planning, marketing. So uh, this goes on like that. Uh, we can apply RPA in these uh, aspects as well. So uh, then comes uh, why uh, the, there are certain RPA vendors in the market at the moment. So this Forrester is a, a research advisory firm. They do uh, uh, evaluations uh, based on uh, certain uh, uh, criteria based on market presence and uh, how do you see uh, how the uh, pre-sale works, uh, after-sale works and uh, customer feedback. So based on these, UiPath is actually the leading market uh, um, vendor in RPA at the moment. Um, so they are motto is, we make software robots so people don't have to be robots. Uh, so, as I said, this is a process automation tool where you actually use to automate the business process. Um, and uh, these, these are the, uh, the, the customer featured customer list of this uh, UiPath tool. So, they, uh, the, there are some promising names like uh, Departments of Defense USA, NASA, and some hospitals like uh, Health Service uh, Norway Hospital and uh, Kiox, uh, uh, health, uh, Max Healthcare and some banks and this goes on like that. Most of these, uh, almost all of these customers have automated actual or, or uh, at least one part of the system, business uh, system to uh, increase uh, efficiency and productivity. Yeah, so this was well established uh, RPA tool uh, where um, there was a requirement now certain business processes uh, as like in Sri Lanka, Mars also have used uh, UiPath. So they have automated their business process. There is a requirement to automate uh, automate the testing aspect of this business process. So for that, they have uh, introduced uh, UiPath test suite, uh, which is a full grown uh, test suite with all the test management activities. Uh, so you can use this UiPath test suite to automate the already automated business processes as well as uh, for others who only going to automate the test aspect of a certain software. Uh, maybe most probably uh, the uh, normal uh, software uh, testing automation part. So it uh, covers end-to-end uh, uh, -end test automation using uh, like uh, SAP web, uh, Citrix mobile API uh, mainframe desktop. So the, the list goes on like that. Uh, the, the, uh, now we are using a RPA tool as a test automation tool. So we need, uh, there are, these are the basic differences um, between uh, RPA and uh, test automation. So the RPA actually, we, the main intention is to do work with the minimum variant and uh, the output would be completed list of items. Whereas in test automation, we are checking the system, uh, verify that system features work with maximum variations. We are trying to figure out uh, all the possible scenarios and uh, the output would be set of uh, passes and failures to take decisions on the product. And uh, so here's a brief, brief comparison on a uh, famous uh, Selenium tool and robot framework and UiPath. Uh, UiPath at the moment uh, as a platform supports Windows only, but there are uh, 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 options provided uh, with the uh, with ac uh, accessing automation uh, in uh, Mac OS as well, but you cannot natively run UiPath Studio on Mac OS at the moment. Um, and uh, Selenium, uh, the targets uh, is mainly web and robot framework, it's web, uh, DB, API, uh, text uh, and others. Uh, UiPath, it's uh, uh, web, desktop, API, mobile, Excel, uh, email, so this goes on like that. Um, so uh, 
Selenium uh, talent uh, programming, Selenium and robot framework is quite moderate. Uh, when it comes to UiPath, it's a mix of visual and text-based programming. Uh, talent pool is also uh, very low, and I mean, um, that means uh, there are not much uh, professionals uh, qualified in UiPath uh, uh, certifications at the moment, so it is low but growing fast. Um, cost is, uh, while the other two tools are free, UiPath Community Edition is free, but if you are using it for an organization, we need to go for the Enterprise Edition, which is not free. So this is the uh, UiPath test suite architecture we discussed earlier. Uh, so there are two uh, main uh, sites, that is uh, Test Manager App and Test Manager Hub. Uh, so Test Manager App is the front end, where the Test Manager Hub is the back end. It will connect uh, to the, uh, uh, through a REST API, connect to these uh, test management or project management tools. Um, and then we have uh, Studio Pro, which is the tool that we are going to use today to automate, write the test cases. And uh, we use uh, Orchestrator to distribute, and uh, we uh, can uh, connect uh, to Jenkins uh, Azure DevOps and build pipelines using uh, CI CD. And uh, we can use uh, robots to execute uh, test cases. So uh, this is the full uh, uh, set of uh, things that you can get in the enterprise version. However, uh, in the community version, we do not get the uh, UiPath Test Manager and uh, UiPath Automation Hub, Hub as well. And the, the number of license uh, that we are getting for uh, each category is also limited. Uh, but this is good enough to do standalone testing work. Uh, if we are going to do, use it in a bigger scale, we will have to go for the enterprise version. Uh, yeah, this is a list of supported applications and technologies based on their website, uh, but I will not go into much of details since uh, we have discussed what it supports basic, uh, mainly um, in a previous slide. So let's try to install and uh, get started with it. Mm, you have to go to UiPath official website. When you go there, um, when you go there, uh, you can uh, try UiPath free. And uh, if you are not registered already, you can uh, sign in, uh, sign up. Since I have not registered, I will use my uh, From here, you can download UiPath Studio. Uh, once you download and install UiPath Studio, um, you will get to this screen. From here, you need to select UiPath Studio Pro. Then only you will get testing activities. Uh, and you need to connect the application uh, to the, uh, you, you need to log in from UiPath Studio using the same user login that you have used to uh, create the account. Uh, and along with this, there comes the um, UiPath Assistant. This is the, uh, the, the robot. So you need to connect this one also uh, by logging in. Once you log in, in, you can see it in green. Uh, uh, since I have already logged in, once you connect, uh, click on that green dot, you will be directing to the orchestrator where we will use to uh, run test cases uh, in an um, unattended manner. But for today, uh, we can use uh, the standalone, uh, uh, we can run it uh, itself from the studio version. So, yeah, so that's uh, about it. Uh, about the tool, uh, you need to include certain UiPath extensions uh, if we are going to use certain browsers like Chrome, Edge, and Firefox, uh, et cetera. And um, here, if we are going to create, a, a, a do a mobile test project, we, we can use this one. Uh, and uh, here, if you are going to automate a process, you are using processors, so we can uh, create using a new process. And if you are using a library, uh, creating a library, you can do this. 
and creating a template also you can use this. But now since we are going to create uh, the automated test case, we'll use test automation. And here I'm going to give the um, name of the project. I'm going to create use the folder. And you can uh, use either VB or C sharp. Uh, for today, I'm using VB and create. Based on the uh, act, uh, templates and the activities that you have selected, you will be getting the dependencies here. Or oh, since I have uh, created a test automation project, I'm getting the UI path test activities uh, and. This, in this view, you can see what is included uh, as the dependencies and as the files. Uh, project uh, is uh, this, and the test case is created as a XAML file. Um, under activities, um, you can see what are the activities available to perform in this uh, uh, test case. Uh, so, um, this is since this is a uh, RPA tool, the test format, test case format is like a typical RPA workflow. So when we are thinking of automating, we need to think about the actual workflow that happens in the UI. Uh, so to support those actions, we can use these uh, uh, different types of visions, uh, sorry, uh, uh, activities available. So maybe uh, data table related activities or uh, more system application related close application these kind of activities so the list uh, is quite huge so i won't go uh, into much details here uh, based on the dependencies you use you will get can get more and more activities here so now say that i want to test a web api uh, so i can always go to manage packages and add additional packages by clicking here, install and save. So now that is added as a dependency and you can see that app integration part has come with the uh, HTTP and SOAP request uh, activities. So, uh, uh, we can, where we can use multiple packages like that and add uh, additional dependence uh, sorry activities so most important uh, uh, activities that we are using today are uh, verify control attribute verify expression attribute and uh, expression with operators um, i'll go to go back to the slide So uh, under verify expression, uh, it returns a, a Boolean value, so you can simply use it there. Uh, but if you want to use it with the operator, you can go for the second option. And uh, if you want to use a direct uh, activity inside this uh, verif verification part, you can use the third option. So you can actually pretty much uh, cover everything with these three uh, activity types. Um, and then the most important part of uh, this is how it finds the elements. So it finds the elements through selectors. Uh, so there are a couple of uh, selectors uh, that it helps, that, that uh, it gives. Uh, I will go back to the application. Um, I will open the test case. Um, say, uh, we'll think about a click activity. Here we need to indicate what, uh, what we are going to click on. As you can see, there is a screenshot, uh, but as the tooltip itself says, this screenshot is only for the information purpose. It is not used as a, uh, a comparison or any other way to find the element. So if the UI is changed in the future, there will not be a problem. You will not have to go and do the uh, everything again. And if the by any chance screenshot books are not there, uh, that is also fine. Uh, it will not affect the test case at all. Uh, instead, what it does is using its um, identifying the elements using 
the uh, selectors. So in, in the UI, it goes like a node inside a node inside a node. So every node has a um, ID. Uh, so we can use different type of selectors to uh, make uh, more reliable uh, 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 way to identify element uh, in a dynamic uh, UI. Uh, for that, you can go to Open UI Explorer. From this, uh, you can remove uh, any of the things you want, or you can use wild cards, uh, or you can use uh, create variables and arguments and use those in uh, uh, the places where you want to do. Uh, and uh, if you want to highlight or like see whether it is correct, say I would like just change indicates that there's a problem and we can validate it against it and it says that uh, it's wrong. So you can always do the changes and uh, do the validation. Uh, so uh, the the selector creation part is very important. Uh, there are other ways to um, there are full uh, selectors and partial selectors where we can use in different uh, uh, places and you can use wildcards, dynamic selectors like I said earlier. And uh, to identify an element, there are uh, uh, fuzzy search, uh, regex, and uh, non greedy search available uh, in the uh, uh, selector itself too. Uh, we can add these to the selector to identify an uh, element in a wise way. Okay, so um, let's get started with the web application automation. So with application automation, let's get started. So the test case that I'm going to automate today uh, for the first uh, section is that I'm going to uh, check the login functionality of Amazon website. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the, the given username and password and checking whether the um, uh, whether the user logged in properly. To do this, uh, I will have to um, well, this is the Amazon website, so I'm going to go here. And if the user signed in already, I will sign out. If not, I will click here and enter the username and password. And once the user logged in, he will redirect to the home page. From here, I will validate whether I can see sign out here. Um, so that is the sequence that I'm following for the first uh, test case. Uh, there are two uh, couple of ways to create test cases. First of all, you can create a test case directly from here, or else uh, we can categorize uh, or we can uh, uh, use the most commonly used sequence uh, as a uh, most commonly used steps as a sequence and re uh, reuse that inside the test cases. So. Uh, in this application, logging part would be most commonly used, so we can use it as a sequence and uh, have it, uh, recall it in a test case. So I will first create a sequence. So I'll give a name here. And first of all, I need to open the browser. The browser I'm going to use is uh, here when you click on the right hand side, you can see the properties uh, related to each activity. So the browser I'm going to use is Firefox and the URL I'm going to use is and uh, then I'm going to uh, click on the Uh, all section when when you go to indicate if you if you are not on landing on the uh, uh, screen that you want uh, you can press F2 and move to the screen that you want and wait until the uh, one, one wait until it uh, reappears and or you can go to the selector and see whether it is validating yes it is correct and then I'm going to click on Sign in. So 
sign in or sign out depends on whether user logged in already or not. Uh, now, in this selector, even though it says it is valid, uh, if, if this AA name is sign out, it would fail because uh, uh, because uh, uh, it is looking for sign in. So we need to uh, change it. Um, I'm going to use the wild card here. Let me check, check whether it's validating. Yes, I'm going to save. Uh, just like that, actually, you can take this application, uh, the file, the browser details also as a variable. But today, I did not do that. Um, and then, now user clicked in. I'm going to input data to the text field. For that, I will use. Uh, Type into activity. Indicate on screen. And uh, uh, I will use this username and uh, we will uh, in a little later, we will see how to uh, call this uh, uh, through another data table or data set. For now, we'll hard code it. Uh, so this detail is hard coded. And now I need to click on the continue option. Then I'm going to click. Click and then now once I click, I get password section. Again, I need to use type into indicate on screen section. Going to and then yeah to uh, click sign. Now theoretically, our uh, first process uh, first sequence is. Uh, 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 ready to execute. So let's try to execute this and see. Going to be on some website and then go in, click on sign in, the data you want. So yes. Now I'm going to create the test case based on this. For that, you need to right click on this and create test case. Uh, and give it. Uh, we can use a, a test data table also. Uh, we'll use this uh, in a little while. For now, we'll just create the test case. Uh, test case is always created uh, in this flow, given, when, then. So the inputs that you are giving or the preconditions should be available in the given section. And when is the set of steps that you are doing? So since we use the sequence already, it has a hold inside the, the when already. And then we have then, that is the verification part. So now since we have already hard coded the uh, required data in the uh, login sequence, I will set only the expected output as sign out uh, where we can reuse it in the uh, then section. For that, I'm using a sign. For this, I'm going to create a variable. You can directly create a variable by pressing Control K from here, or you can do the same from uh, here, right side on the value, and you can come to the variable section and create a variable and uh, arguments as well. Uh, I will create the variable directly from the basic cell. str expected would be uh, now this variable uh, you can see its type uh, string, but there are other variable types as well that you can use and uh, in, uh, uh, you can browse any type from here. Uh, but the scope is uh, scope only for uh, this given sequence. 
we cannot reuse it once we give only to this uh, scope. So we need to increase the scope to the entire test case. For that, we can uh, increase the scope. And then let's go to the verification part. To verify that, we need to first click on here. So I'll go for the Nikki. Get on screen. Yeah. And then I'm going to verify what I am getting. I'm using a verify control attribute. I'm going to verify what I am getting here to the with the expected output here. So for that, actually, uh, I need to check the text uh, which comes under this element. So for that, I'm using get text activity. So we just have to drag and drop it here. And we need to indicate it on the screen. Go to the select and see yes. And then um, contains uh, XDR expected output. So test case is done. So we'll try to execute this and see. Just going to close this exactly. Center the username and password and sign in. And go and verify. So let's see, check the output. Uh, verification passed. Uh, expected the output. It, it was the uh, sign out. Uh, so now the problem is we have actually hard coded all the data. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to uh, use a, a data file that we uh, already created. I have a test data file where I use all the uh, test data that I need to use for this uh, demo. So I will use it. You, you can add it by right clicking and add this data. Mm. This data file would be this one. So it has several worksheets. Uh, so I'm going to use this worksheet and I am going to load uh, all the data in that worksheet. Right. Test data is loaded now, but actually the problem is we are using these in the uh, sequence. So we need to create arguments to use these things. Uh, I'm creating um, two arguments uh, with the direction in because we are taking the data from the uh, Excel sheet and another string argument. Oh, sorry. Yes, string. I'm going to replace the hard coded values here. So now we need to actually we only uh, up, upload uh, at the test case file. We did not uh, assign anything anywhere in the test case. So we need to import the arguments we created. You can check all the uh, things that we uploaded here, uh, all the, the things that you can see. So uh, these are the table names, uh, uh, column names. So here I'm going to use these column names and assign to which field that we are going to use it. So in username, we should use, uh, for password, we should use, So now it's done. Once you upload, uh, once you add the test data using a test data file, you can uh, see these two options. Earlier we had only this one. Uh, so with these, you can actually run the test cases with the data variations. So uh, you can see uh, the test data you have selected here. I'm going to run this test case with the first set of test data. So opening a new browser, signing out. And the username and password again, login. So yes, it's uh, it's easy uh, to do it that way. 
and there is another option um, that uh, you can do uh, that is you can actually record the sequence that we just manually did using uh, the recorder uh, uh, so once you use the basic recorder you can uh, say i'm going to record adding a certain I'm going to select this one, add to part. And go to the part. And we'll stop it from here and save and exit. So as you can see, it is creating the same kind of flow. Uh, the, uh, uh, the advantage of this is to the person who's uh, automating a certain process or a business flow, uh, you can easily record it and do the relevant uh, activities like uh, editing selectors uh, and, or assigning additional properties, uh, assigning code parts, uh, uh, validations, uh, or, and also you can add uh, activities in the middle. So you can do anything. Uh, you just need to record and get the idea of it uh, uh, to uh, make the process easy. Um, but actually, uh, the the most advisable way is doing it uh, uh, step by step. But that is also possible when it comes to the uh, recording options. Then there is uh, screen scraping and data scraping. Screen scraping is actually uh, extracting raw text as like a, a value from any element, image, or a region of the application. Where data scraping is mainly for web, where if the data is presented as a uh, table, uh, you can uh, extract that. Uh, I will show you an example of data scraping uh, in this uh, Amazon website itself. Say that I'm going to uh, order a thermometer. So I'm getting uh, a list of thermometers here and it goes across uh, seven pages. Uh, so say there is a requirement for me to um, extract all the names and prices of these thermometers and later use it uh, to do some uh, 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 filtration and order the most uh, uh, easy, uh, most uh, inexpensive thermometer. Uh, so to do that, uh, you can easily go to the, this case, I'll go data scraping. Here you are going to select values that you want to use. For it to become a pattern, you need to select at least two uh, fields. Uh, no, it didn't come. If it, did, if it comes correctly, everything uh, shows in uh, 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 yellow. So let me try it again. For some reason, it's not coming. I'll try it again. Next. Okay. Uh, usually it comes here, so I'll, so I'll show it in, in another uh, step. Um, it is taking only two values at the moment. Uh, and then here you can actually uh, specify the uh, list of results, uh, how many results you want. So we don't want to limit it to, if you don't want to limit it to 100, you can put zero and add the extra data as well. Um, say that I'm going to use the price. Yeah, and you can use that as well. So just like this, uh, you can grab the data from this entire list. And when you go to finish, it is asking, uh, is uh, data spanning multiple pages? Yes. Uh, if you want to indicate how to go to the next one, you can go and click that. How to go to the next button. Uh, so there is a test script that I have created uh, using uh, this uh, data scraping scenario. Uh, I will uh, run this and show you.
uh, in this test case, the same scenario that I am trying to fetch all the data from this table where we get the thermometer related details. So it's fetching the data. And uh, the output of this uh, screen scraping part is a, another data table. You can uh, write this data table into Excel sheet or CSV file. Uh, here I have used an Excel sheet. Seems it's taking some time. Yeah, so data table is created. It is this one. Yeah, so these are the list of prices and uh, names. So just like this, you can do the other, uh, get the details and the links and everything as well. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would like to show you uh, an invalid scenario how uh, uh, here in this test case I am going to execute uh, this test case against a wrong password. So how this validation would uh, fail. Uh, it is looking for the exact sign out but it is not uh, signed in. Uh, so you can't see the sign out button in this uh, section. So theoretically validation should fail. the output you can see that the validation is failed. Uh, so as you can see now we are executing all the test cases using uh, automation studio. Uh, so for you to execute multiple test cases you have to select uh, multiple and uh, run but actually the best way to do this is uh, once you now you are doing the test case writing in your machine and if you are ready to publish or uh, to uh, share it with others you can make test case set as publishable. Once uh, you set it, you can publish. Uh, you can, if you have already uh, published uh, as a previous package, you can select that one or you can use a new one uh, and the version details publish to which place um, and then next give the certification details and publish. So once you publish the test cases, you can see it in the orchestrator under the packages. So from these packages, you can actually visualize what is there as well. You can see what exactly inside this. Um, uh, you can um, create a test process and assign this package and create set of test sets and run it uh, from the orchestrator itself. For this, uh, you don't have to execute everything manually. You can select and mix and match and uh, do the uh, create the set of test cases. Uh, the most useful aspect of this is uh, say that you are working in a big uh, uh, project uh, where you would have to uh, execute uh, uh, or where multiple uh, teams have to execute uh, test cases at the end of a, a final release cycle. Uh, so each one of us uh, making are uh, making the, our own test cases in our local machine, and we can publish everything to the same uh, package or the same uh, path. And uh, from that, you can share it with everyone. Uh, and uh, and create uh, based on the packages, uh, you can create uh, test cases for regression test suite uh, and uh, smoke test suite or the UAT test suite. You can select whatever the test cases that are available in this package and create separate set of processes to execute these test cases. Uh, I have not tried that one here, but uh, I have read in their uh, academy and uh, in their forums that this is possible. Uh, and you can actually do uh, multiple uh, test uh, reporting and uh, you can um, uh, uh, trigger it, trigger the jobs uh, automatically as well. So orchestrator itself is a separate uh, topic, so I will not go into much details of this. Mm, then, uh, 
Oh, you guys stopped. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure why it's coming like that from the beginning. Anyhow, I'll go like this. Um, so the next part is extending the test case flows. Uh, like we did earlier, we can use more and more variables and we, we can make data driven test cases and we can use uh, reuse sequences or templates. You can create your own templates. You can create your own libraries. Uh, uh, they advise actually to create libraries and include all the UI components there if your UI is uh, drastically changing and reuse those in the test cases so that you will only have to change the library once the UI is changed. And then there are other new activities available in the uh, UI part marketplace. Uh, if you want additional activities, you can create those using uh, activity create as well. Um, and then let's go to the API automation part. Um, for the API automation part, they uh, 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 for this actually we support uh, UI path supports uh, uh, both HTTP and SOAP requests. Um, so the test case I'm going to do today is uh, going through this. Uh, uh, I'm going to send uh, get request to this uh, API and check the uh, status and another post request and check the status and check whether these have uh, executed correctly. Um, for that, um, using this API test cases, I'll close these ones. For this, I have used HTTP request activity. Um, for the uh, in this HTTP request activity, you can give the endpoint and you can give the request method and parameters, attachments, and pretty much the same way as a normal HTTP request that you would send. Uh, once you add it, I will delete it since I have one already. Once you add it, you can go to the properties panel and do necessary changes uh, to the uh, parameters and everything as well. Uh, and then uh, in this test case, I have assigned uh, the result, uh, the uh, result to a variable and I'm sending it to DC realize and I'm getting the uh, status code as a variable as well. And uh, in a later stage, I'm checking the um, username of the DC realized uh, uh, JSON uh, with what I expect uh, and same as the email. And then I check the status code as well. Uh, so it's pretty easy to use the uh, this tool. And you can see uh, this is the uh, response and status was 200. ID is 2 and I'm getting the expected outputs uh, from everything. Expected results and then let's see the. Um, create new report activity uh, here. I have added additional parameters. Uh, so I'm sending the name and job in these uh, parameters. Uh, and uh, the same way I'm deserializing the JSON and uh, checking the uh, status code and the uh, username. So let's execute this and see. Yeah, so the request request was sent successfully. This is the request and the expression uh, was uh, what I was expecting the username. Uh, the status post was uh, 201. So the post request was successful. So just like that, you can uh, not going to be too much details about each and every post uh, uh, the API request. So you can perform API, API automation as well from this tool. Um, and then comes the um, mobile automation part. So we can actually automate uh, 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 native and mobile web applications, support both Android and iOS. You can post, uh, create, uh, you can uh, connect real devices and possible to connect cloud devices as well, but you need this uh, uh, package 
uh, UI path, mobile automation activities. Even for the APIs, uh, there is a uh, separate uh, API web package. You need to include that as well. And for the prerequisites, we are using Appium uh, uh, to connect. So you need Appium. Uh, today I am using an Android uh, application uh, with these specifications. Uh, so I'm using the Android Studio as the simulator and uh, I'm sending, I'm trying to use this application to test a fake login scenario. So I will go to the application. I will try with a different wrong username and a password and navigate to home and click on a list. So let's see how uh, this is happening. For this, you need uh, to create your test project using mobile test project. If not, uh, you need to specifically add this activity, this package by going to manage packages. Then only you will get the automation, mobile automation part in here and mobile automation activities here. Uh, so let's go, what is, uh, let's talk about mobile device management here. Uh, so this is the place where you locate your uh, store all your devices and application details. You can create as much as devices you want uh, and uh, with uh, iOS and Android and applications as well. Uh, so I have created one. I will just go and show it to you. Uh, you can give a name and appium URL um, platform. Give the name, the device name. Um, and the platform version. And if there are any other things that you want to do, you can do it. And for the application, we are using an app. So this is that URL. Or if you're using a web, uh, so you can use that as well. And uh, you can actually say that there is a mobile application where you have to run it against multiple devices. So you can configure multiple devices. And by running here, what you could do is you are executing this um, this application in this um, uh, device. So just like that, you can execute this application in other devices as well. So it's easy to configure. Let me see whether my uh, uh, PM connection is working at the moment. Yeah, now let me give it a try. So this uh, for this test case, um, I have uh, I'm using mostly the tap option, tap activity, and set uh, text activity, and another uh, verification activity. Uh, and for the next uh, one also, some taps. Uh, and uh, another verification. So let's see how you can uh, execute this test case. To see how it is executing, you can keep the uh, device manager open. Um, it's connecting to the device. Um, here they actually have uh, recorded actions and uh, uh, for the mobile devices as well, but I have not tried that. Um, I, I think it should be the same. So I'm login entering the username and password. I'm very login credentials. So probably we must have verified it there and we are going back. We are going to the list, clicking on the list and checking whether we got the correct list. The output, you can see, yeah, as expected, it's an invalid login and we have gone into the correct list that we expected. Uh, so uh, like that, you can uh, automate any mobile uh, activity. Uh, and since in the same tool, we have uh, mobile web uh, desktop uh, API uh, support, uh, we can actually uh, get the, we can send a, re a request to an API and get the request 
and we can uh, uh, from the request we can uh, uh, extract out the uh, usernames or passwords or any any data we want and use it in the mobile application or we can actually see uh, the response uh, that we send uh, response to a request that we send uh, to the API from a mobile or uh, uh, web application as well. Uh, so that is also possible. I have not tried that the second scenario because I couldn't find a free open free uh, uh, application to try that. But I have tried this uh, uh, um, uh, taking the uh, uh, output of the uh, response and then assign it to the mobile application and use it there. So I will just run this and show it to you. It is uh, it is uh, somewhat the same. Only thing is we are using the response from the uh, API call. So this uh, here it should take yes. Janet is the the response I was expecting. System UI. Yeah. So it failed because uh, system UI was not expect uh, responding. Otherwise, uh, it was taking the uh, uh, output from the uh, UI uh, re API response itself. Um, and uh, then we have a desktop application automation. Uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, I have created already one of the test cases where we create, where we automate a desktop application. Uh, we uh, open it and enter details and generate a report and we just verify it. Let's just run it and see quickly. And do the validations there. Yeah. So uh, you can do it like that as well um, for the desktop applications. So orchestrator and publishing scenario we already discussed. So I will skip this slide. Uh, we can generate reports by using some packages like reporter for UI path activities, and there are advanced reporting features available for uh, the users uh, in the enterprise version under test manager. So this is the paid version. Um, uh, and also uh, we need to actually uh, see say that there is a process uh, that we need to automate uh, inventory process where you get the invoices and uh, you extract data from that one and you fill uh, it to a certain file and uh, you sort those out and fill uh, the relevant ones to a desktop application and then uh, you need to enter these data to a web application hypothetically let's say it's a uh, tax uh, related application so you need to uh, do that so uh, and you can later on uh, connect to a mobile and uh, test that entire flow as well. Uh, so that is also possible since uh, it is uh, uh, supporting multiple platforms. Uh, for today's demo, I did not cover. Uh, I did not uh, in include the mobile part application uh, at the last of this inventory process that I just discussed. But uh, I, I found something similar to that. Uh, to do these kind of things, you can use uh, a concept called workflows. So when you add a workflow, you can uh, uh, include what anything that you have mentioned inside the same project. So be it a mobile uh, sequence, a desktop sequence, or whatever the sequence that you want to use, you can include it in the sequence uh, flow chart and you can create flow charts uh, by using uh, conditions as well. Uh, so if, if this fails, it should go to this path. If this path has, it should go to this flow. So uh, it is uh, pretty easy to automate an entire flow. Uh, in testing aspect, uh, I think we can use this kind of things for end-to-end -end, uh, flow of testing in a UAT environment. So I will just execute this and show you. So these are the invoices. It is getting the details from the invoices and filling a sheet. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there are six invoices altogether in different formats. Yeah, and then uh, um, this is the seventh one, the last one, and then we are going to include these uh, data in a desktop application uh, where you need to enter. And um, I'm going to use some of these uh, data in a web application. Uh, As well. So uh, this is a very simple flow, but uh, in, in the actual production environment, uh, uh, given their uh, customer portfolio, I can assume that they have done pretty complex uh, uh, workflow automation in their respective companies. Um, and then uh, if you want to study UI path, there's a strong online community, very active. Uh, so they respond to your questions very soon. And there are free and paid courses as well, uh, mainly carried out by UI Path Academy and other institutes. And uh, there are certification programs done by UI Path Academy for RPA developers, citizen developers, and uh, business analysts. So you can uh, follow those as well. Um, and uh, so at the end, actually, uh, what I want to say is UI Path is a very well established RPA uh, robotic process automation tool which extends the testing capabilities recently. So as a testing tool, it is very, it is still young, it is not quite famous, but uh, as a uh, process automation tool, it is quite uh, stable and strong. So we can think of using these process automation activities in our uh, uh, test automation work as well. So I hope this uh, tool will be quite like useful uh, when it comes to automating uh, certain platforms and uh, certain um, uh, areas as well, mainly since this supports different virtual uh, uh, environments like uh, Citrix and uh, virtual box, et cetera. Yeah, so in essence, that's what uh, I wanted to say today. So as I said that I'm still learning about this, so there can be areas that I'm not aware of and um, that I need to explore. So, but uh, if you have any questions, I would like to, uh, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, Oshidi, yeah, in Yeah, hi, yes. Yeah, uh, good presentation overall. Uh, Thank you. We feel like, uh, there is uh, steps you kind of uh, getting object and placing it and uh, putting actions, right? So like a diagram. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in your code base, you said that uh, click uh, click the sign in button and sign out button. Those flows. Mm. Are, no. Mm. So each and every time, do we need to uh, kind of uh, uh, record that? to put in order to run the scenario or we can mm -hmm. reach this for another test cases as well like a drag and drop uh, drag and drop also possible you can copy and paste as well uh, yes. in, in this case uh, once we uh, use it as a sequence uh, we can actually reuse it in the inside the test cases but actually as you said uh, we can copy paste drag and drop and uh, uh, copy this entire sequence and reuse it in another place is also possible. And also in, in inside also we can modify, right? Yeah, yeah. Inside also we can modify and we can include uh, our own code uh, parts as well. Uh, these areas I have not explored yet, but we can include our uh, own code parts also inside these uh, activities and uh, in, uh, in inside these activities. Right. So is there any capabilities to kind of export this to some kind of uh, 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 the programming language uh, syntax? Mm, that, we, yes. Uh, that I'm not uh, very sure about that uh, uh, in theas. I will check that and get back to you on that. Right. Okay. Have you tried this with uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm asking many questions. Right, uh, let's see if, if in order to, uh, because uh, you show all the flows and uh, executions and uh, scenario building up and those stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. And also, you def uh, in uh, in the initial stage, you mentioned that we can uh, extend this to uh, in a CI 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 CD hmm. level also, right? Yeah. Into yeah. With, uh, those uh, the what uh, continuous integration platform. Hmm. Yeah. Have you did that part? No, no. That you can do it through orchestrator. Orchestrator mm -hmm. itself is uh, 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 quite like a full package. So I did not go into much details of orchestrator yet. Uh, uh, India. Full package in the sense uh, that is uh, come this, with a manager, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't come uh, for the community version. We don't uh, get the test manager, but he, he, orchestrator itself for the uh, um, free version, there are many things that we can do when it comes to management or execution of test cases or test, tests. So that part I have not explored yet, uh, but uh, I have read that it is possible. And also, so actually, I have not done that. Right. Initially, you mentioned that uh, it supports only Windows, right? It uh, you can run uh, UI part natively on Windows, but uh, there are options that they have uh, extended. But you cannot run UI part natively on uh, Mac OS. Mac OS. So, so let's say we if we implement these scenarios on a Windows based operating systems, and if we if we put a remote call or something like that in a other other operating system like Linux, Linux. Mm -hmm. so, um, Mac OS, is it possible for it for us to uh, send the command and uh, execute it there? Mm, you mean like in a virtual environment? Yeah, yeah, and providing yeah, yeah. and uh, all the information, but the test need to be run in other operating system machines. System. Mm, yes, I think uh, uh, this uh, the what they are saying is you cannot run uh, UI part Studio Pro in a uh, uh, native over Mac OS, but execution part as far as we are having the uh, uh, applications, uh, I assume it should be okay, but uh, that also I need to double check in the ask. Okay, okay. okay, I'll, okay. I'll get back to you on that. All right, thank you. Okay. Any other mm. questions from the audience? Especially when comparing this tool against the other RPA tools, hmm. what are the drawbacks in this tool in particular? Um, other RPA tools and this one. Uh, drawbacks, I think uh, one of the main drawbacks is that it is unable to run in uh, Mac OS. Uh, so that is one of the main drawbacks. Um, and uh, 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 Testing wise, it is extending uh, the capabilities recently, whereas uh, some of other tools, they have done it uh, uh, earlier. So those are the drawbacks that I can think right now, but uh, there could be more. Uh, yeah, one more thing, uh, Oshadi, like uh, when, when it comes to packaging, Hmm. Or uh, when it comes to the dependence, like uh, this fully, the test is uh, mainly uh, implemented in your machine, right? Yeah. So, to, if you want to package it and give it to someone else, do we need to consider dependency and other factors as uh, well? Is it able to run in any any uh, platform that uh, any other people has? Have, uh, right? You mean without uh, UI Path Studio? No, right? Let, let's say no. The, even if they have UI Path Studio, yeah. Will you you like after you implemented, you kind of uh, deployed it to some other one's machines or something like that. Hmm. If you put like that, so OSHA is implementing, and you need to ship this to someone else, and they need to run it. Hmm. So when it uh, comes to automation, we have to uh, always think about. Uh, how to resolve dependency and other stuff, right? Hmm. So, is it possible for us to uh, run it in any server uh, which uh, runs uh, Windows as operating operating system? Uh, uh, yeah, that is what actually Orchestrator does. Once we uh, uh, publish it uh, and send it as a package, from here you can uh, execute in uh, another one's machine as well. 
so um, uh, it actually includes the dependencies and everything uh, uh, and uh, you can uh, 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 actually you need the dependencies so if you are going to copy and uh, use it manually you need to have the uh, entire project with the dependencies and everything but uh, the the orchestrator what orchestrator does is once we publish uh, uh, it is uh, giving the possibility of running it uh, in others or shared environments as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and one more thing, like you mentioned that when it comes to enterprise, you have additional features uh, and mm -hmm. additional reporting part, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, if, have you went, went through kind of uh, what are the additional features that providing in reporting? Uh, because uh, we, we saw the simplified report in uh, community edition, right? Uh, yes, uh, you can actually create your own report structures also through uh, uh, adding packages. Uh, we can create our own uh, packages like uh, say that you need to have a specific reporting structure. So report in a uh, sorry specific structure in a report. So you can uh, uh, create it and uh, have it as a package and use it uh, in your uh, activities. That is also possible. You can do it uh, in uh, your local machine. But in the uh, enterprise version, I did not explore what are the additional uh, reporting facilities available uh, in the. Community version, there are very simple uh, uh, packaging uh, reporting things available uh, at the moment unless you do the changes. All right. Normally, uh, when it comes to Selenium automation, we reuse the object uh, uh, object repository, right? Like um, object properties. Here, uh, if there are any places we are saving uh, the captures, the setups uh, then that we can reuse it like drag and drop or like earlier also i asked uh, by copy pasting it hmm. but we can use the same way in other other selenium related tools like uh, we we have a shared object repository and we can kind of call that repository so can hmm. we be able to do in here as well or we, each and every time we need to tell the test scenario these are the object properties that you need to use uh, no, we can do that as well. So we need to uh, uh, create a template and uh, uh, use that template uh, so that uh, you can uh, share the object repositories and like everything that you need to share, you need to do it. In my example, actually for the simplicity, I did not uh, do uh, much of those extending parts, but uh, you can have your custom activities, custom templates, custom uh, uh, code parts uh, where you can uh, have these uh, reusability components. Uh, we, you can extend this uh, to reusable these things. Yeah, thanks, Oshidi. That uh, that uh, it's a good important feature, I think. I mean, yeah, then yes. To worry about uh, we, uh, the each and every time that when we run the automation, so we need to consider the objects for all the scenarios. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. Uh, so actually, as I said, if yes, this is like uh, I'm, I'm learning about it and I'm, I'm trying to uh, study this uh, and see uh, how I, we can uh, use it uh, in our project. Uh, so there are many areas that are that uh, should be explored as well. And there are many other areas that uh, 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 that uh, uh, could be available and I'm not aware of. So. Uh, uh, so it's like uh, given that it is a full package as a RPA tool, uh, there could be other uh, ways to extend uh, where I have other than the ones that I have mentioned. OK, good. Okay. Any other question? As I uh, also mentioned, this is not just a uh, is automation tool. This the support uh, process automation as well. I think it's a hand, handful feature mm -hmm. in this particular tool. So if there are any further questions, uh, please contact Oshadi on those. So thank you, Oshadi. This is really a good presentation. Basically, this uh, tool covers uh, 
web, web uh, mobile uh, API, desktop, and, and all the platforms, basically. Platforms means uh, the, the web mobile and uh, API. So, yeah, thanks again. Thank you also. Yeah, keep on exploring new things. Yeah, good work. Thanks for joining to this uh, Kiwi talk. Bye. Thanks, Ocean. Bye. Bye, bye, guys. Thanks, Ocean.